Welcome to Algebra 1, Unit 7, Lesson 4-6, Part 2, Absolute Value Equations and Inequalities. Pearson Algebra 1, Copyright 2009. I'm Mr. Plarsky, and our objective today is I will be able to solve inequalities that involve absolute value. In the previous lesson, Part 1 of Lesson 4-6, we looked at the solving absolute value equations. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing in on inequalities, and that would be absolute value inequalities. Back in lesson 4-6 part 1, what we learned was that the absolute value of x, let's say, is equal to 2. Um, that had two solutions by the definition of absolute value. x would have to be equal to 2, or x would be equal to negative 2 getting to put in my negatives. Clean this up a little bit. And this x is equal to a negative 2. Now that was in lesson part 1. Today in lesson part 2, we're going to be focusing on inequality such as x, the absolute value of x is greater than 3, something like that. And in that case, um, the absolute value has to be a number greater than 3 or greater than negative 3, so we could write that as the absolute, or x is greater than 3, or x is less than negative 3. We'll see how that works out in the graph in a little bit. We actually already learned how to do that in lesson 4 or 5 on compound inequalities. The other inequality we're going to look at today would be something as simple as the absolute value of x is less than, let's say, 4. In that case, this number has to be smaller than 4, and those values would be x less than 4, and values x greater than a negative 4. And that would be a compound inequality that we could also write as this, negative 4 is less than x is less than positive 4. So this one here we could write this way or this way. So let's see how we solve for complicated absolute value inequalities. Example 3t, solving an absolute value inequality. Solve and graph the solution. Something I like to use to help remember which sign would be the little place I like to call Goreland. In some of my classes I like to say we're going to visit Goreland because it kind of sounds like it might be a place. To solve this absolute value inequality of the absolute value of y minus 5 and the absolute value is less than or equal to 2, what we have to do by the definition of absolute value is rewrite this as two separate inequalities. In this case, since we have a less than symbol, this is a less than symbol in this one, we will use the and connector. So when we rewrite this, we'll rewrite this as y minus 5 is less than or equal to 2, and y minus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Remember, the two changes we made in the previous lesson, or the one change we made in the previous lesson, was change this number here, and that was by definition of absolute value. And since this one ultimately is multiplied by a negative 1, we turn this sign around. So then we have to solve each inequality separately. And we'll do that by adding 5 to each side. On the left-hand side, the minus 5 and plus 5s go away because they're opposites, leaving us y. Bring down the inequality. 2 plus 5 is 7. Bring down the and. And on the right-hand side, we solve in the same manner by adding 5 to each side. The minus 5 plus 5s are opposites. They go away, become 0, if you will. Bring down the inequality. y is greater than, do the math here, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Since this is a compound inequality with the word and, we could rewrite this as 3 is less than or equal to y, is less than or equal to 7. It's always the smaller number on the left and the greater number on the right. 
and graphing that solution is pretty simple as we've seen in class. Once we have our two numbers that we solve for, put the 3 here and the 7 there, and we do a bit of shading or darkening in. Since they have equal signs, that gives us the closed circle, and it has to be y, or the value has to be between 3 and 7, so we shade the middle. So that was the example 3t, solving an inequality with less than, so we used and from the city of Goreland. Example 3t, part b, solve and graph the solution. Similar setup, the absolute value of y plus 2.3 is greater than 7.5. The difference in this problem example B is that we're given a greater than symbol so we will use the OR from Gorland. So when I rewrite this as two separate inequalities, I write down Y plus 2.3 is greater than 7.5 OR y plus 2.3 is less than negative 7.5 and we solve each inequality separately. On the left hand side we'll subtract 2.3 from each side. The 2.3 minus 2.3 on the left goes away leaving the y, bring down the inequality symbol, do the math here, 7.5 take away 2.3 that gives 5.2 bring down the OR. Now on this side of the compound inequality we solve by subtracting 2.3 from both sides. Notice that's the same step. That should be a 2.3 not a 3.2. The 2.3 is on the left go away leaving Y. Bring down the inequality the less than. Over here simplifying this math negative 7.5 take away 2.3 gives 9 point, negative 9.8 we really can't write this any other way except for the word or and so to graph that solution you make a pretty simple number line make it real simple if you want 10 over here is 0 in the middle this should actually be a negative 10 and this would be a 10 over here since we have greater than and less than symbols with no any with no equality no equal sign we'll use open circles and then we shade. We can do that by reading each inequality. Oops. I'm so used to making my more simple graph. Just forget that graph. We can make a even simpler graph. On the left hand side we'd have negative 9.8. On the right hand side we'd have 5.2. Open circles. And then we read each inequality to shade y is greater than 5.2 so that would be to the right of 5.2 and y is less than negative 9.8 that would be to the left of 9.8 value smaller than that so that would be the solution for example 3t remember when you're working with absolute value inequalities it's good to remember the city of Goreland it's real useful at least in algebra 1 and algebra 2 it's a nice place to visit it's a good uh, Way to remember it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.